Jesus. Be with the bereaved families here, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Keep us in the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' holy and righteous name. Amen. We're back. We're back again. And we've been where, where we've been now for quite some time in the book of Romans. Oh, what a time we've been having in Romans. And I encourage you to tell people that you know that what we're doing here at Unity NBC Sacramento, California, and come and join with us in this journey in Romans. And then go back and look at what we did in Acts as well. Oh, what a time that we've been having. We are in now in that all-important 12th chapter of the book of Romans. Romans, pro-Romanos. Romans, the letter to Rome from the Apostle Paul. What a time we've been having. We're here in the 12th chapter of the book of Romans where it begins as such. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And we're going to read the second verse, but we may not get that until the next section, but we're going to read it. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? We're going to use for a subject a living sacrifice part. What is the way we can do all this in, in one setting? We're going to do our best. A living sacrifice. I do not know what's wrong with my microphone, but we're going to try to push through this. A living sacrifice. Are you a living sacrifice? This subject, this scripture is causing everybody, first of all, that is a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, to take a parenthetical look at one, at you, at who you are. Time, can somebody get one of the microphone? And I'm going to see it because I don't know why this was clicking out. We won't be able to take with this, doing this. Uh, no, 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 no just, just one of those there. Click on one and make sure if it's on. And I'll take it if it's on. Is it on? Neither one of them on? Not one of them on. Okay. I may have to move up there and we'll see how this goes. It causing all of us to take a look at ourselves. Am I a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is my, as God's word says, reasonable service? And a lot of times, people aren't there because they're caught up or just a segment of who they are belongs to God. I'm only going to give God this portion of me and I'm going to take the rest over here. But no, my brothers and sisters, if you are living at Romans 12, 1, if you have been born again, there's only two ways. You must be a living sacrifice, or if Jesus is not the Lord and Savior of your life, then you must be on your way to becoming a believer in Jesus Christ. And once you become a believer, you then become a living sacrifice. But today, many people aren't there. But I'm here to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, you must be a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Because here it is, there are people all around you that, that, that are not. People say, I've been in church 50 years, but they're not a living sacrifice. They've just been going through the motions, and they just like the preacher because he's cute, and they just like, that's the church where everybody drives a Lexus or a Bentley at, or that's the church that got the, the banging, or whatever you call it, that's hip today, praise team, and you know the kind, and once they praise, and they go right back out the door again. There are a lot of people like that, but they're not 
living sacrifices unto the Lord. You must be a living sacrifice unto the Lord. I know some people will say, preacher, I don't want to hear about that. I don't want to hear about this. I don't want to hear about any of that. That's okay. Because at the end of this message, I got a scripture for you that I want you to make sure you memorize and hear what I'm saying. But you must be a living sacrifice unto the Lord. This point. When we ended last time, we were in the eleventh chapter, and this isn't going to work. Nothing but the devil trying to stop us from. And I hate to preach too much here because I like to be able to, be able to move around. But to those that are watching through YouTube, please forget, forgive us for this faux pas. And we're going to move up here to this podium, and we're going to attempt to preach this from up here. Now, how we started and how we got to this point is we came out of the 11th chapter of the book of Romans. We ended with, but I say, did Israel not know? First, Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are in a nation. I will move you to anger by a foolish nation. Verse 36, for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen. Listen at what Paul is saying here. For for Listen again to what it's saying. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Listen to that one more time. Who is him? God Almighty that rules and super rules this world. For him. Listen to this. And through him and to him. So many people don't even make it through that because they're so caught up and who the world is. Heck, they are. That's what's wrong now. We live in a very narcissistic society in which people is what I want to believe. No, it's what I'm going to believe. I don't care what that old silly preacher says. I don't even care what the Bible says. But you better care about what the Bible says. The Bible says, listen at it one more time. I ended that last message with this. For of him and through him and to him were all things uh, to whom be the glory forever. It means all things, all, 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 means all things, mean all things to God. Let me say that one more time. All things, all, 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 let all things be to and for God. Let all things, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to build this up, y'all. Don't, 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 don't walk away from it. From through him to all things, all things, all, all, all is the operative word. And that's the word we're going to go for when we go to being a living sacrifice. All things. One more time. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to shout, right out, shout all by myself. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Forever. Amen. Forever. Amen. So it doesn't matter who we think we might be or who people say that we are. We belong to God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Boy, if I mess this thing up. Amen. But he's a, we, what we're trying to get you to understand is it's important that you be a living sacrifice to the Lord. And not just when you show up in church, but in all areas of your life that you be a living sacrifice for the Lord. And I'm going to throw, throw this in and we're almost through. What most people, I, a lot of people today say, well, you don't understand what I've been through. And this is for those who've been through some things. And I can totally understand you being through some things. I can understand you. Things didn't, you didn't, think you, things didn't start out right for you in life. I can understand that things are not going for you right in life. I can understand that you've been broke. I can understand you've been busted. I can understand you've been digested, 
I can understand that you've lost everything. I can understand your husband walked out on me. I can understand your wife walked out on me. I can understand your children don't care about you. I can understand you've been fired not only once but several times from a job. But all, all things must be to God. Let me give you an example. Um, before 1920, in this country and most parts of the world, um, if you were to say, I need to seek therapy because I can't deal with what's going on, you probably would have been laughed at. Therapy was something, the few people that experienced it, they experienced it because of Sigmund Freud and some other earlier, early pundits of psychoanalysis, psychology, psychiatry, and they, most people were, could not have therapy because it wasn't available. Today, a hundred years later, it is a multi-billion dollar industry. Now, write that part down. Because a lot of people say that that's the, 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 the catch-all and do-all. What the people did from that era and prior to that era, they believed totally in God. God was there for him, him and through him and to him and all things. God was everything to them. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He was everything. They put their trust, they put their wherewithal, whatever went down, whatever went down, whatever happened was because whatever happened, it happened because it happened. But they put their trust in God and God, they knew and felt that God was going to heal them of the situation. It's not like that today with the least little thing. And well, well, you can have churches now who have had, in bigger churches I might add, who have full-time psychiatrists on staff to help people with therapy. But those people back in those times believed in God. They trusted in God. Now, I'm not, I'm not uh, knocking analysis on any level. I have a cousin who's a doctor, Brenda Way, who's, Brenda Way, who's an actual uh, practicing psychologist. So I'm not knocking it, but what I'm trying to get you to see is people back in those days, they're all and all and all was God. And people today, if we learn to give our all and all and all to God, we'd be a better people. Yes. Romans, the sixth chapter, verse 19, Romans 6, 19, tells us that I make it there yet I'm trying to wing my way there I knocked all my markers out of the way Romans 6 19 but I speak to you in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh for just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness and if you go down just a couple of verses more, in the 22nd verse, it says, But now, having been set free from sin, and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. We've got to ascribe and make our all and all towards Calvary. Our all and all must be towards holiness. That's how we're going to make it in these troubling times in which we live in. That's how we're going to survive in this time in which people are so wicked and evil and craven and talk about you like a dog and smile in your face. Does anybody here know somebody like that? Smile in your face. Uh, there's a song that Undisputed Truth put out in 1972 that said, smiling faces sometimes pretend to be your friends. Smiling faces show no traces of the evil that lurks within. We live in an evil and narcissistic time. You know what? I'm going to trust in the Lord because my all and all and all and all and all is to the Lord and for the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now when we say living sacrifice, in the Greek, it is zoothusian. Living 
sacrifice. In the Hebrew, it is korban shahs, which means living sacrifice. Whatever you do, it must be a korban shahs, living sacrifice. Whatever you do, it must be a zuah husuin, a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Everything that I do is a living sacrifice unto the Lord. People around you today, they don't care about God anymore. They don't care about holiness anymore. They don't care about their relationship with the Lord. They don't care about Jesus anymore. They don't care about the Holy Ghost no more. They don't care about God's word anymore. But what do you do? You still be a living sacrifice. Kobe Quran towards the Lord. No matter what they say. And I've had people, I had a young lady recently tell me her old, her old man didn't want to go to church anymore. That's what I told him. I said, when you pray for him, give him to God and you keep serving the Lord. Because a lot of times we want to force people things. You know what that means? You're just wasting your time because they're not believing this. They're not feeling this. They don't care about the Holy Ghost. They're not trying to live a, a life separate before the Lord. They're not trying to live a sanctified life. And because of that, they're not being a true living sacrifice for the Lord. You give them to the Lord. Let the Lord deal with them. Let the Holy Ghost, as Dr. Walter Martin used to say, open the eyes and ears of their soul. Let, let him do it. Because a lot of people don't care. A lot of people are dying and going to hell. They don't care. How many of you know this? They don't care. My grandmother said something to me one night. We were talking about somebody being hard-hearted towards the Lord. And, I, and she says, well, you know, Popper, some people just don't care if they go to hell. And she told me this 40 years ago, over 40 years ago. You be a living sacrifice for the Lord. Let that person go. Let them let them just give it to the Lord. Give them just, just look, you know what just gave them. You made them, you know all about them. You take them. Let the Lord deal with it. And you go on and be the person you need to. It's okay to drop a few nuggets on them sometimes. It's okay to drop a little scripture on them sometimes. It's okay to tell them what does say the Lord, but you give them to the Lord. And leave them in. You be the living sacrifice. You be the suo thusia. You be the corbi chiai, the living sacrifice before the Lord. Now, I've been, in, I've been interested in this message all, all, all of what you are, all of who you think you are, all of who you are within your family, all of who you are in your community, all, 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 all. Give that to the Lord. In the book of Joshua, when it says all, Joshua, the first chapter, um, it says, be strong and of good courage. For this people you shall divide as an inheritance of the land I swear, swore to their fathers to give to them. He tells them again, be strong and of good courage. Verse 7. He tells them again in verse 9, I have commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For your Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. He tells them again one more time in verse 18, Joshua 1. Um, Shall be put to death, only be strong and of good courage. If you're going to be the true living sacrifice to the Lord, you have to be strong and of good courage. Um, I had a certain pastor, I won't say his name, but I remember many years ago I went to help him do something. And he was just sitting in front of his church. I said, well, Doc, what's the matter? He said, tell me if I wasn't a strong and good courage. Man, I would take a, I'd put my Cadillac back to this U-Haul, and I would head back where it came from my facade, because folks are something else. But no matter what folks are, you have to be strong and of good courage. The children may not want to hear you. Be strong and of good courage. Your community may turn its back on you. Be 
of strong and of good courage. You don't know what I've been through, preacher. It doesn't matter. Be strong and of good courage. They didn't give me, they didn't give me up with the help. I've been given up with the help before too, but I'm still strong and of good courage. Suppose in 2011, at the time of this taping, 12 years ago, I had given up when they told my mother and my daughter to give up on him. He wasn't going to make it. 12 years later, I'm still standing for the Lord. You've got to be strong and of good courage. Don't give up. Be strong and of good courage. Because when you do that, then you are, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Who? Zoe Basin Korban Shah, a living sacrifice. Even in the book of Romans, how in the book of Acts, the 16th chapter in the book of Acts. Listen at this one. A person put their all and all on the Lord. Suddenly there was a grant. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Then so this was after they had beaten them and robbed. How many of you would be praying and praising God if I had just took, them, took my back and started just beating on you? You going to give me You going to sit there and praise God? Oh, heck no. You'd be wanting to get a bat and get back at me. But listen to what they did. They were in midnight. They were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors were open. And everyone's chains were loosened. And the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep. And seeing the prison doors open. Supposedly the prisoners had fled, drew his sword, and was about to kill himself. But Paul called out in a loud voice, Do yourself no harm, we are here. And they called for a light and ran in and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Silas and brought them out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? Now this is what he tells them. So they said to him, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved, you and your household. Listen at this, and they were, spoke the word of the Lord to him, and all who were in his house, the operative word, all, 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 they all were saved. My brothers and sisters, you want to get your household saved, get them, pray over them, pray for them, that they all, all, all are saved. A lot of times we I hear people who complain about their children aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Are you praying over them? Are you lifting their voices up when they travel different places? Are you lifting them up before the Lord when they're around all these crazy people out here? Are you doing everything you can do to get them before the Lord? That's what you've got to do. Pray and lift their names up before the Lord and pray that the Lord change them. All his household, all, 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 all of his household was saved. That's what we are to do. All of us, all of what we are, all, all, all of what we are should be walking circumspect and holy before the Lord. Hallelujah. When we're doing that, we're again in 12.1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse 17. But he who glorifies, let him glorify to the Lord. Let everything that you do as a living sacrifice glorify the Lord. Now I'm going to step on, on YouTube. I'm going to step on a couple of toes. I'm not trying to step on a couple of toes. But I'm trying to help somebody today. You can't come here and say, um, um, and act holy, and by one o'clock, you cussing, smoking weed, oh yeah, drunk, being crazy, talking about beating somebody up, or helping somebody beat somebody up, or giving somebody the bullet to go get a gun to get at somebody. It doesn't work. Everything that you do should glorify God. Toxa, glorify who God. Everything, not just some, every 
thing, everything, rearing your children, doxa, glory, find God. When you're at work and your co-workers are conspiring against you. See, some of you don't understand that. I've been on a job where people were conspiring against me. I told you this story before. There was a lady that got mad at me because the principal gave me her room and she went around trying to just bad talk me, besmirk me while at the same time she was handing out tracks to people. Hi, honey. God loves you. But at the same time, talking about me like a dog. But you know what? I couldn't say nothing. I couldn't do anything. All I could do was give that woman to the Lord and let the Lord deal with the situation. And everything that you do, glorify the Lord and be a living sacrifice. Be a Zoroaster, be a Korban Shai, a living sacrifice unto the Lord. 1 Corinthians 3.12 for I determined not to know anything amongst you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. You know, that's been our theme here off and on for many years for church anniversary and men and women's day. I declare not to know anything amongst you but Jesus Christ. Oh, and him crucified. That's why I was telling you earlier today as people now are talking about this thing uh, that was 1 Corinthians 2.2 2, as some people are talking about what's going on in Israel and Palestine. Let that go. Let that go. Don't get into arguments with people. If you got, if you got a couple of cousins that's slamming down 40 ounces and they give a name, let them have their yip yap about this little yip yap. What you do is you pray and give that situation to the Lord because it's actually something much higher than above. Even my pay grade, what's going on in Israel is going to happen. What's going on with Palestine? What's going on with the Soviet Union? What's going on with, with, with Iran and all these places? It's above my pay grade. All I can do as a believer in Jesus Christ is to give and encourage people. Follow Christ. Love Christ. Follow Christ. Follow Christ as you follow him. Follow Christ. Hallelujah. I determined not to know anything amongst you but Jesus Christ and him crucified. We're almost through. One more text. One more text. Romans, the sixth chapter, verse 22. But now, having been set free from sin, having become a slave of God, you have your fruit to holiness and everlasting life. As somebody who, 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 is, who is going after and trying to be the best Christian, the best blessed believer in Jesus Christ, the best follower of God Almighty, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, the best thing that you can do is to follow in the power of the resurrection and holiness as Romans 1, 4 tells us, and be the best that you can be as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. The best thing that you can do is tell others how to find Jesus and how to live for Jesus and you be the best example as you can be following our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Many people today aren't, don't care about all of that, but I'm here to tell you I'm a living sacrifice holy and acceptable before God, which is my reasonable service. So I'm going to follow the Lord to the very best of my ability. I'm going to follow the Lord because I don't have anything else to follow. I can't follow Islam and the Quran. I cannot follow the Vedas and Buddhism. I cannot follow those who are burning sage. I cannot follow those who are putting dream catchers on the wall. I can't follow those that are following, playing with Ouija boards. I can't follow those who are running around in the New Age movement. The only thing that I can do is follow my Lord and follow my Savior, Jesus Christ, the same Jesus that said, I the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's who you follow. If you're a true follower of Jesus Christ and being in God that is a living sacrifice before the Lord. It's like sometimes people will say, how can you do all those skills? How can you go to the cemetery? How can you go to the mortuary so many times? Because I'm a living sacrifice before the Lord. I can't do anything without the power of the Holy Ghost coming through my life. I can't stand 
without the power of the Holy Ghost in my life. I can't march forward without the power of the Holy Ghost in my life. I can't speak without the power of the Holy Ghost in my life. I can't jump for joy without the power of the Holy Ghost in my life. I can't restrain myself from messed up situations without the power of the Holy Ghost in my life. You need today, my brothers and sisters, the power of the Holy Ghost in your life if you're going to make it. Now I said I'm going to drop a scripture on you at the end of the message. Look, turn with me to Romans Revelation, the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation, the 412th chapter in the book of Revelation, 14th chapter, where it says, and another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, a fallen that great city, because she has made all nations dry drink the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel then said in a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out from the full strength of the cup of his indignation. That means those that take the mark of the beast, those that accept, don't accept Jesus while they're in this mortal body, they're going to be lost. My brothers and sisters, he shall be tormented with the fire of brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lord and the smoke of the torment ascends forever and ever and they have no rest or day or night who worship the beast or his image or whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints and they who are keep his commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Here's the killer part, verse 13. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, right blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. That says the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. See, a lot of times we just want to use this verse as something to quote in a scripture to make everything solid. But it's all about if you die without Jesus, you're going to drink that indignation from that bad wine. You're not going to have a part in the tree of life. The Bible says, he says at the end one more time, then I heard a voice from heaven saying, blessed are they, blessed are they who we're talking about, those that are living sacrifices before the Lord, who are dying in the Lord. I want to die in the Lord. I want to be a living holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. Thank God for the fact that Jesus died on that cross for us. Thank God he died on that cross, was taken off of that cross, put in a bar or two. He got up on the third day morning with all power in his hands, all power in his hands, all power in his hands, That's where I want to be a living sacrifice before the Lord. I don't want to be on that other side. I want to be with my God. I want to be with my Jesus. I want to be with my Lord in heaven. One day, my brothers and sisters, we live in a time where people don't care about that anymore, but you just keep on believing. You keep on teaching. You keep on sharing with people. And yet, still be a living sacrifice. Be the living sacrifice. Be the best living sacrifice you can be for the Lord, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service, your reasonable service, your reasonable service. Be the best you can be. Be the best you can be. for the Lord.